Okay, so guys, uh, good afternoon, all of you. So I have connected with you today to explain about your capstone prep two project. Uh, I have noticed or observed that most of the students here do have a lot of questions and concerns that comes with Agile and Scrum. So in order to answer those questions, in order to clear the confusion with the concept, we have introduced this new sessions, guys. At 3 p.m., we are planning to have the sessions on regular basis on every Sunday, 3 p.m. with a new topic. Okay, so if you can explain, tell it to your friends also, they can also join and get uh, benefited with it. So today is the first session on Capstone Prep 2. Okay, so having said that, first I'm sure uh, the people who have joined here uh, are in your Capstone Prep 2. So basically people who are not much aware of it. So basically this, this Capstone project is all about a application that is called as Scrum Foods. Okay, guys, it's all about Scrum Food. It is basically a food delivery application, uh, just like Swiggy or Zomato, where we would deliver the food. The customer would order the food and we would deliver the food. That is the main purpose of this application. And other, other things is very common. And we all know how Zomato and Swiggy works. And we would be work doing a Scrum project on this Scrum Food. So instead of I taking this as an example, I have come up with a very similar application, guys, that is called as Food Express. Okay. So basically, what did I do is I have come up with a very similar application. This is also a delivery app, but the name is changed to Food Express application instead of talking about Scrum Food. So basically, this application also we would work on Agile framework and eventually Scrum model. Okay, guys, Agile model is Scrum framework. I'm very sorry. It has to be the other way around. Okay. Fine, guys. So the first question of your prep two talks about the Agile Manifesto. So guys, basically what do you mean by Agile Manifesto? This is nothing but a document that outlines the four basic values of Agile and the 12 principles under Agile. Please note, this is not just for Scrum. This Agile Manifesto is true for all the frameworks that come under Agile, which consist of Scrum, Kanban, XP, Extreme Programming, and there are many more. Okay, guys? So the most commonly used ones are Scrum and then Kanban and eventually uh, XP, guys. So this Agile Manifesto outlines what are the values and what are the principles that we have to consider while accepting Agile. Let's assume I am an organization with Waterfall. Okay, suddenly I would like to introduce this Agile into my organization. I want to do an Agile project. They just can't take it up and start working on it. They have to first understand or outline what is the values, what is the main four legs or the main purpose of Agile. So unless and until they do not consider the Agile values and 12 the Agile principles, you cannot successfully deliver your Agile project, guys. So first question in your prep one talks about the Agile manifesto. So this is what you should have as an answer. Okay, guys. So uh, are we clear with this or do you have any questions on this case? Are we clear with what is Agile manifesto? All of you? <clears throat> okay. So talking about the next question, Okay, I'm talking about the next question. The next question talks about what are user stories, acceptance criteria, business value, and, and complexity points. So guys, basically, whenever you're writing a user story, basically, what is a user story? A user story is nothing but a small task that can be delivered in a very small time period. Okay. Uh, User story is a very small task that can be delivered in a small time period. And you just cannot write the user stories as we like, guys. Okay. You should have a very unique way of writing these user stories. If you look at the, my screen here, I have clearly showed you that every user story would have an user story ID. Every user story should have a user story ID. Now, what is this task? Most of the people of you, uh, most of you people have questions, man, what do you mean by task? Sometimes you would see a two there, sometimes you would see a three there and so on and so forth. So basically, <coughs> whenever you're talking about a user story, sometimes 
a user story can be big in within itself okay user story can be a little bit now for our easy understanding what did we do we will break the user story into smaller tasks see like for example let's assume okay just let me open one word document i'll show you there see let's assume i have a user story okay this user story says as a user i would like to view my orders i would like to view my orders so that i can generate a or i can give a feedback now what is happening here if i have to write a use i have to write an acceptance criteria there are certain tasks in it first and foremost i he, the user would like to view the orders he would like to view the orders now once he view the orders what is he wants to do he wants to create a list he will create a list and based on how many resto let's assume in for one restaurant he has ordered five times six times seven times or eight times so he would like to give a feedback on those restaurants where he has ordered for multiple occasions right he will identify those list and then he will go to the feedback column and then he will give a feedback so guys in this user story don't you agree there are three tasks do you all agree right so here yes, in order to finish my user story i have to first understand there some small 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 activities that the developer should do only then the user story is complete that is called as a task are we all clear guys all of you who is here in this session 26 people yes that okay now going back here so now what is the priority priority is nothing but the importance given to this user story guys generally how do we prioritize we prioritize using two ways one is using mosco the other one is using mvp and mvp stands for minimum viable product basically this minimum viable product is nothing but what is the main features what are the essential features that i have to deliver to the client right now what is that the client would need immediately okay those user stories are called as important user stories and you're prioritizing that user story 1 2 3 or there are certain techniques low medium high also but eventually what is the main purpose of this priority that we are giving an importance to the user story so guys now talking about the value statement this is a very very important description of your task okay please note what is the value statement it is nothing but the description of your user story so now you are just explaining the customer or the developer see as a hungry customer i want to order food conveniently using food ex express so that i can enjoy delicious meal without any hassle so he would like to order food okay he would like to order food why because he can enjoy that meal. that is what is the value statement so accordingly we have to create the user stories okay so now what is bv business value so guys be simple business value is nothing but the value of that user story to the business i'll give a very simple example here guys let's assume i am amazon okay the client has come to me in the month of october okay amazon the client amazon has come to me in the month of october and told me that guys please work on this amazon.com application okay now as a business analyst as a scrum team which user stories must i start working first which user story or which features must i give deliver first to the client probably i have to give him offers and discounts you agree i should give him gifts guys can are you able to understand actually your voice is still not clear your sorry voice is break uh, in between your voice audible when you start this bb con wait okay okay guys just give me 2 minutes then guys just let me just give me 2 minutes i will connect back okay just no no problem ma'am no problem yeah just
okay so guys uh, is it okay now yes it's okay is it is it are you able to understand what i'm saying yes absolutely okay so now as i told you that whenever you're talking about this user story right business value is nothing but the importance given to that user story okay so again uh, i gave i was talking about an example let's assume i want to i'm working on amazon application and i would want to deliver an important feature okay in the month of october so now as a part of it what will i do i will first work on the features called as offers and discounts and gifts and probably some festival or holiday specials right because december is a huge holiday for people out of india right so i will work on those features because those are of high bv business value to the customer because he will because this is agile we deliver the features in small periods right he can actually give it to the end customer and start getting money right so please note that depending on the importance of the application and the and every, all other areas we will start working on those user stories and here this is called as your business value clear guys so what is complexity points again complex to complexity points is nothing but effort of the developer now please note we all tell always tell that you know complexity points 5 complexity points 6 means 6 hours 7 hours but please note in scrum 5 is not 5 hours guys one unit is not one hour okay please note in real time one unit is not one hour there is a unique calculation that is handled okay where you calculate the number of hours so one hour based on the project if your project is big one unit can be 5 hours one unit can be 6 hours so here when i'm putting the number 5 i'm not putting 5 hours i'm putting 5 units okay which means the development team would need 5 units to work on complete this user story this 5 can be 5 hours or even 15 hours depends clear so far guys any questions with what is complexity points uh hello ma'am yeah so basically uh Uh, give complexity point by using planning broker, right? Uh, uh, numbers one, two, three, five, eight, like that. Yes. It's not restricted to eight. Means, uh, is it or do we mention that complexity point is up to thirteen and we thirteen? Yes, you can this... give any number, right? Based complexity point is calculated when the planning fork or the cards are given to the whole development team, and the development team will sit and give their own unique. Let's assume I am a developer, I give five, and you give seven. Then the whole team will give some sort of numbers. They'll all discuss and they'll come with one answer. That is how the complexity points are finalized. And the BV value is hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Ah, those are currency notes again. so there are many such techniques but okay. one of the technique is currency notes where we give 50 100 500 1000 like that so let's assume 1000 is given to one bv which means it's the highest value okay clear yeah? thank you yeah, yeah. ma'am yes points are similar to story points which one complexity yes complexity points are also called as story points okay okay guys so now if you am talking about the user stories guys basically here as i told you earlier user stories would have acceptance criteria right so if you remember i told you acceptance criteria is nothing but how you are trying to um yes i just see it see i have i've already written the user stories for you uh, not sure if you can see this okay guys see this i have already written a user story i have written the user story id as 001 there are three task is what priority one okay the value statement as a hungry customer i want to order food conveniently using food express so that i can enjoy the delicious meal so they gave a business value as 1000 and complexity point as 5 now guys whenever you writing acceptance criteria generally we don't give a lot of emphasis or emphasis on the acceptance criteria but please note that acceptance criteria does play a very very important role in explaining the developer what exactly he should do 
okay so make sure the complexity points in real time when you go to an organization make sure your complexity your acceptance criteria is very very well written if you look at my acceptance criteria see i have a basic flow i have an alternate flow and i have an exceptional flow just like how you write your specs right see this as a basic what's the basic flow i would want to order food i will go home page will be displayed i will look for specific restaurant i will sell a desired restaurant i will put the items to the cart i'll proceed to check out process right so we all know this so this is how we order the food you all agree guys right so you will have person and everything is done now what is an alternate flow if the desired restaurant is not available then i should be presented with alternate restaurant with the same suggestion don't you agree the system should give me the alternate solution alternate suggestions do you all agree guys are you able to understand yes Oh, yes. yes see if the yes, item is also not available then i should be i should also get an alternate options like for example let's assume i want biryani guys from abc restaurant i don't get abc restaurant is not there so i should get another restaurant who is serving biryani okay now i want chicken biryani let's assume i don't have chicken biryani so they should be giving me other non veg options like probably a shrimp probably egg or something right that is what alternate Should be there, and if there are any promotions and discounts, they should also be displayed during the checkout process. So this is called as an alternate flow. And what is an exceptional flow? Exceptional flow is something that will never happen, no matter what. Exceptional flow is something that will never happen. Guys, it's very unique. No, no. Okay, guys. So basically, in your exceptional flow, if there is a network issue or a downtime, I should receive an appropriate. error message and if there is a delay in estimated i should be uh, notified if there is any delivery issues then i should be notified that is except that does not happen for every order right but in some orders it will happen are we all clear with the user story guys do we have any question <laughs> This is how uh, actually typically you should so, write the story, guys. Yes, hello. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, I was just asking. So the forty that that we have to make. So each user story has to be big, or can the steps be like See, also short? Um, this can be short, and I'm just giving you a very real time experience. In real time organization, this is how a user story must be written. But for a capstone prep project, you can make it very simple and very easy. because you will not have time to go through it but if you have time you can write it like this or else you can also have a simple answer but this is how authentically a user story must be written clear guys okay clock wheel okay guys clear so shall i go to the next question yeah. just a minute guys i'm very sorry clear guys now let's talk about the next question epic so guys basically what is an epic so the expectation of this answer is guys so you need to explain us what is an epic and what right two epics so basically here the epic is nothing but a bigger user story as i told you so guys basically sometimes you will have login can be an epic payment can be an epic okay so these are called as epics and underneath you will have user story if you, if you see my screen i already gave you two examples ratings and reviews can be an epic and scheduled order orders can be an epic right so here to explain this better i have already written an answer also for you guys see this see so basically here 
and epic should have the name epic ratings restaurant ratings and the reviews so guys please note every epic does have user stories underneath it so as an expected answer what you can do is you can give two examples of epics and also write two user stories under each epic you don't have to write the acceptance criteria it is completely okay but definitely my recommendation is please write these two user stories under each and every epic that would definitely give an understanding to you how generally the scrum project works clear so far guys so you should write the epics and the user stories and again epics and the user stories that is the expectation of from the that answer clear use more than two or it should be two you can have more than two also no problem i just oh. gave an example of two but you can also have more than two problem but the expectation for the prep to this answer is that please write the epic and write those two user stories write an epic and two two or three user stories are we all clear with this answer guys okay so talking about your next question it is all about the business value so guys please note we all know what is business value please make sure you explain this business value in a very detailed manner and also please write the techniques that you would use to uh, create this business value and complexity points so you need to write the difference between dv and cp and also explain the techniques that generally are used here guys and if you are really interested to write an answer in a very unique manner you can give an example also here how is how would you uh, calculate the bv sorry how would you put the bv here for your case study okay or else if you can just give a theory answer that is also good to go clear so far guys okay fine the next one is nothing but so what did i do is just for your understanding guys i only gave i also gave you how do you evaluate the business value and complexity points this is only for your understanding guys so basically in an organization in order to calculate the business value first you need to understand the impact of that user story on the revenue on the cost and other measurable business metrics see please note that if you are saying that the user story must get the highest value it is not just the value that is given to the client but also the value given to the company also because the company must also be benefited by the by the project right so if we are not getting any revenue from that user story there is no point the client is benefited even the it company must also be benefited guys so first the user story will be measured based on the metrics given here once it is measured then they will make sure is it according to the objectives of the company or is it according to the objective of the application then they will select a technique and then they will calculate the business value is it all clear guys so far how is business value calculated so for the complexity point also we will we will understand again the customer perspective here in your business value we are thinking from the business perspective but from the complexity point we are calculating from the end user perspective okay now we need to understand what is the main purpose of the project what does the customer actually expect what does the customer want according to the user feedback according to their importance then we will make sure that this user stories have to be delivered no matter what so guys whenever you are calculating the complexity point the team has to look at what are the expectations of the end user what are the feed user feedback what is the market demand because if you do not work on your user story guys your competitor will work and he will release the project and there is no point of you releasing the project if you don't work on it right so make sure you understand the external factors the internal factors the competitors and accordingly you need to start working on your user story guys are we all clear with what is business value and complexity points so guys please note this is not expected from your answer in prep 2 i am only giving this for your better understanding guys you don't have to write like this in your prep 2 in your prep to just explain what is business value technique used the complexity points the techniques used and why are they important and so and so forth okay guys like that if you write it is more than enough in your answer sheet 
Any questions so far, guys? Are we all good? Hello? Yes. Is it all good, guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Fine. Okay. Okay. Now, going forward, the next question talks about your sprint. So, guys, basically, when I'm asking to write about the sprint, I have seen people writing very short answers and writing very generic answers. So please note when I'm talking about the sprint, you need to explain what is the sprint? What is that goal, that sprint goal? What are the meetings that happen in the sprint? Okay, what do you mean by, what? who are the stakeholders involved in the sprint? So please note that what all important points that is there, you need to write all of those points here when I'm talking about the sprint. Okay, so I'm again repeating. When you're answering about sprint, please explain what is sprint, what, which stakeholders involved in the sprint, what meetings are there in the sprint, what do you mean by a sprint goal, and so on and so forth. Okay, guys? So all these answers must be included in the sprint. Okay, all these answers must be included in the this answer explain about sprint. Clear, guys? Now, talking about the next question, it's a very simple, straightforward question. Explain about product backlog and sprint backlog. So basically, what is a product backlog? Product backlog is nothing but um, a document that is owned by the product owner. Product backlog has a list of all the requirements irrespective of it is in sprint one or sprint two. All the user stories will be there. Okay. So basically, in a sprint backlog, it is nothing but the, it is what you have in the sprint goal. Development team owns the sprint backlog. It is nothing but a subset of product backlog because here you're only pulling out few user stories for this sprint, right? So like that, you need to differentiate this, okay? So this answer definitely has to talk about what is a product backlog and what is a sprint backlog. Explain it and then you close this answer. Are we all clear this? Next. The next answer is nothing but your impediments log. Now, what do you mean by impediment log? Please note, guys, that impediment is nothing but a blocker. Okay. Whenever the team has certain blocker, please do not consider this as a bug. It is not a bug. It is a something that is stopping you to take it forward. Okay. That is called as an impediment. Generally, impediment log is nothing but a list where you uh, register all the impediments where the team will manage and track all these obstacles so that the progress of the project is not it's not touched so basically you need to write two impediments here guys so what are those two impediments we have i just gave two examples here i'm having an issue with delivery partners i'm not able to get people who will deliver there's a technical issue when i'm trying to process the orders Okay, these are the two impediments that is stopping from that application. Currently, I cannot work on that application because these are the two impediments I am facing. Okay, guys. So, these are the two answers that you need to give. Let's just give me a second. Did I download anything for you as well? I'm looking at it. Okay. So guys, if you look at my screen here, I have just written how we have to uh, write an impediment log. So this is a log ID. I'm said delivery partner is not there. So what is the impact? What is the priority of that impediment? Whom is it assigned to? What is the stated status? What is the action taking for this problem? And what is the resolution? See, I said that the there are no delivery partners in the specific region, region which, was, which is why the customers is being dissatisfied because the depot is not delivered on time, right? So now the current operation team are trying to recruit these partners. The HR team is, is trying to fast track the onboarding process. Now what is happening as these efforts are going on, the HR team is also making sure that such kind of issues doesn't come in the future. We'll not have such kind of impediments in the future. So like this, you'll have the status of every impediment clearly defined in your agile process. Are we all clear with what is impediment and impediment log, guys? 
okay so this will be useful for you when you are trying to explain it to the mentor so as an expectation from the answer please make sure you write what is an impediment log because i have seen people writing what is an impediment no the question is what is an impediment log okay and also write two impediments related to our project are you all clear so far guys yes ma'am yeah okay okay now so basically the next question talks about velocity of the team so what is velocity velocity is nothing but amount of work a development team can complete during the sprint so basically is how many hours is your development team going to allocate to this sprint okay please note as we please note that a developer might not be able to spend 8 hours or 8 hours or the whole complete productive time on one sprint because he should work on multiple other sprints so whenever it calculating the velocity of the team which is calculated by a scrum master we need to look at how many story points what kind of work is there what kind of uh, work is pending what is the average velocity like what is average velocity let's assume you have five developers you will sum all the all the effort and you will divide by five right so that is how the average velocity can be calculated but eventually we don't have to worry about all that but velocity or velocity of the team is calculated by the scrum master during the sprint planning meeting where the scrum master will decide okay now i have uh, developer a b c d e one hour one hour one hour five hours so these people have promised that they'll work for five hours how many user stories do i have let's assume i have 15 so guys if i'm spending five hours per day how many days can i finish that sprint so for 15 user stories mm. so 15 Three. user stories might need some so the like that they will calculate the duration of the scrum the sprint time so i do i need so now it's at three days which is that is a cut to cut i should always have some reserve right i'll put one week so this sprint will take one week to complete are you able to understand how it is calculated now, guys? Ma'am, uh, hmm. instead of uh, I understood was uh, instead of the number of the user story, uh, they consider the story points. The user story is provided by. Ah, ah, ah. Means the story point that we gave earlier to the yes. user story, and we add up that uh, divide by how many hours. The yes, developer yes. worked on that. Is yes. that right? True, it is. Yes. When I'm talking about user stories, it's not number, it is definitely the story points only. Because we have already calculated that in the product backlog, right? Backlog, right? We will take that into consideration. But eventually, velocity is nothing but how many hours the team can spend. Clear, guys? Right? Okay. Now, guys, sprint bank burn down and product burn down. Guys, all are you all aware of how to create a sprint burn down and product burn down from zero? Anybody who doesn't know this? So basically, for the sprint burn down and the product burn down charts, you need to go to the Jira tool, prepare the sprint. Okay, guys, create sprints, and then once you go to the Jira Jira tool, you will be able to automatically get this burn down charts so guys please refer to this jira recording that is available in our portal to understand how to draw the sprint burn down on the product burn down charts okay guys so it is today afternoon i have taken a jira session guys they have clearly explained it there but if you do not uh, if you have missed the session please join or take the recording from the library section of the Portal. Guys, any questions on the sprint burn down, product burn down charts? Anyone who's attending uh, the session? Ma'am, mm. ma uh, I watched the Jira session um, two days back. Okay. You mentioned product burn chart. Means you can put uh, feature, features and export uh, from there. And we can see sprint uh, burn down chart. But yes, sir. Amit sprint burn up chart, but product burn down was not available there yes Amit, because jira does not have product burn down charts okay so as long as you understand how to create a sprint burn down you can just you can just change the story points and dates and then you can also prepare a similar product burn down also 
Jira does not have the product burn down, but does not have a sprint burn down. But accordingly, you can also prepare a product burn down, right? Because you have more sprints here. For a sprint burn down, I have taken story point. For a product burn down, I can take sprints. It will be sprints here. Don't you agree, Amit? Yeah. Uh, we need to product burn down chart, but in which tool? Don't worry. When you're putting an answer, just put the sprint burn down. Beside it, also put a product burn down. Just explain the mentor. What is the difference between a sprint burn down versus a product burn down? Clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Done. Now. Then the next question yeah. here is the yeah. Ma'am, Jira session will be again uh, be conducted or will there be only the recordings? The Jira session will be conducted next month. So for this month, we have finished it just in the morning. Uh, oh. If you want the recording, it is available. But if you want the real time session, you need to wait for the next one. Sure. Yeah. Okay then. So guys, the next question is about the product grooming. So basically, what is product grooming? This is also called as product refinement meeting, right? Basically, once the product owner identifies the requirements, features, and everything, what happens is these features and these requirements sit in the product backlog. However, they are not, they are very in a haphazard manner. They're not prioritized. Neither they're in a the right manner. So what happens is this, in this product grooming or product refinement meeting, the product backlog gets cleaned up. Okay. So basically, as a part of this meeting, what happens, we will review the product, the, uh, the features, we will prioritize, we will clean the items, the tasks. Eventually, we will put the product backlog into a working condition. That is called as product grooming. So what is the main goal of product grooming is to make sure the product backlog is well prepared, organized and ready for implementation. Right? Because this product backlog would be used by many stakeholders to get taking forward, the developers, Scrum Master, BAs, all of them. Right? So we should be able to understand how to work on the product grooming. Clear so far, guys? So grooming will be done by... BA's the whole scrum, no, the whole scrum team will be involved here. Definitely, product grooming is a very important activity. It is definitely not done by one person. All the stakeholders, all the scrum team will be involved in this product grooming sessions. Clear? It will be done daily scrum meetings. Or? No, 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 no. Product grooming is actually a some activity that is done on a regular basis. Once the sprint starts, you will have product grooming. Whenever you have change requests, you can have product grooming. Whenever you have any enhancements, you should have product grooming. So whenever you feel that user stories are not well defined, even then you'll have product grooming activities because this activity, product grooming is nothing but cleaning your product backlog. Like the best example I will give is cleaning your wardrobe. Once you clean your wardrobe, don't you clean it uh, on regular basis? Right. So mm -hmm. same way, we are also trying to clean the product backlog because we want to make sure that everything is easily understood and transparent. Clear so far? Did I answer your question? Okay. Generally, how is this meeting conducted, guys? You set the context, you will review the backlog, you'll prioritize, you'll refine the backlog, estimate them. If there is any dependency, we will work on it. And we'll also discuss on the acceptance criteria. Please note, the acceptance criteria will not be finalized at one go, guys. You'll have meetings on a regular basis. However, definitely acceptance criteria will be there. Like for example, should acceptance criteria will be should be detailed? Should it have a happy basic flow, alternate flow, exceptional flow? Should it have only basic flow? So all the discussions, how the sprints should go in the future, everything would be discussed and they'll also fix on how many times we should meet for the backlog grooming which occasion should we meet who all should but all these discussions will keep on happening in this meetings guys so in a nutshell product grooming meeting is nothing but a meeting where the scrum team will sit together and refine the product backlog clear so far guys are we all clear Okay, the next question here talks about the role of a scrub master and a product owner. So guys, this is a very straightforward answer. 
basically product owner is somebody who heads the product who has complete knowledge of the product who is the prime responsible responsible person to explain the requirements to the team in simple words scrum master is that somebody who is more like facilitator of the project he'll make sure that the people we are all following the scrum framework well we are making sure that the project is successfully completed we will make sure everybody is aligned with the project okay guys so you can also use a similar table and prepare the this answer what is the role of a scrum master and a product owner are we all clear guys do we have any questions so far okay fine now what all meetings are conducted in scrum project guys i have written so much because you can read it later so we have multiple meetings under scrum not sprint so first one is called as sprint planning meeting this is where we will discuss about the what are the user stories um, what the duration who are stakeholders which developers will plan the sprint in decent manner that is called as sprint planning meeting in a daily stand up meeting we'll discuss only three questions what we have done yesterday what will we do today and what we will do tomorrow these three answers or these three questions must be answered in a daily stand up meeting generally the stand up meetings occur only in the morning in the morning hours the start of the day and just generally for 15 to 20 minutes we will have a quick call to understand the what the team will do in the day okay guys now the sprint review meeting is basically conducted at the end of the sprint where we will talk about what happened in the sprint okay what went right what went wrong did we adjust were we able to complete the user stories if yes what lessons have we learned if no why so all of this the review you are trying to review your current sprint in this meeting okay so we're trying to understand uh, good or bad from this so that they can use it for the next coming sprints guys okay that is the main purpose of that sprint then you have sprint retrospective again what is it retrospective it is nothing but what can we learn for the next sprints how should the team behave for the next sprints if we were successfully completing the sprint what good are we doing if not what, where are the impediments what are the dependencies where is it going wrong all of that we will learn from the review meeting and we will follow that in the retrospective meeting we'll plan for the next coming up sprint that is what is happens in retrospective meetings apart from these meetings we also have other meetings called as backlog refinement meeting release meeting and ad hoc is unplanned meetings so we have unplanned and many unplanned meetings that happen where we we'll sit and discuss the depending on the project now the next question is nothing but your sprint size versus scrum size okay now what is a sprint size sprint size is nothing but the duration of the sprint is it 2 weeks is it 3 weeks is it 4 weeks basically sprint size is nothing but how long is your sprint okay who will decide that as i earlier told you the it basically depends on your needs your requirements mvps mosco but eventually what is the sprint size it is nothing but how what is the duration of the sprint guys then what is a scrum size scrum size is also called as scrum team size generally for a bigger project we will have 10 guys for a on a stand industry standard says it should be 7 and a small project can also have 5 okay so undoubtedly a team must have a developer must have a scrum master a product owner guys testers and other people are optional but even definitely a scrum team must have developers and the product owner and scrum master are we all clear guys what is a sprint size versus scrum size yes ma'am then then we have to understand the definition of ready versus definition of done so guys what is definition of ready it is nothing but a checklist which says that this user story is completed yes i already told you that uh, basically a user story must be completed now who decides this definition of ready and definition of done is decided by the product owner he will tell us 
what is it completed what is not completed okay so that that explanation is given to you by do and dot just give me a minute let me have some water and come Okay, guys. So definition of ready is nothing but the list that will decide if the user story is ready. Now I'll tell you the difference in a very simple manner. So, guys, basically, a sprint has the user stories, right? Now, the development team will work on those user stories. Now, before I give it to the client, how do I know the user story is completed? Right. So all the list, like for example, what are the dependencies? what kind of wireframes, what kind of diagrams, what kind of um, extra, anything, external resources that we need for the development of that user story must be completed. That list is called as definition of ready. This is a list, this is a list I'm sorry, created by the developer development team that explains and gives them a clarity. Okay, if all this, List is done, check, checklist, we are good to go. That is called as definition of ready. Clear, guys, all of you? Okay, then we have this definition of done. Definition of done is that final, where before we deliver it to the client. Because generally, definition of done is more technical than functional. Because this is where we'll check the code. This is where we'll make sure the UAT is cleared. We'll, this is where we'll, we'll make sure that the, the user story is validated against the acceptance criteria. Right? Making sure the user story is documented well, well and the product owner has reviewed. And everything, all, it, all of it must be there by, for DOD. So please note, DOR is more functional. DOD is more technical. Okay, guys. So all the aspects of your functional, technical, every aspect is measured, checked, reviewed, accepted, and then it will be delivered to the client. Are we all clear with what is DOR and DOD, guys? Do we have any questions here? Anyone? Done. Okay, guys. Then I'm sure we all know this, what is prioritization technique. So please hear the expectation is write an answer about, write a paragraph about Moscow and write a paragraph about MVP, minimum viable product as a part of your answer. And here, the, what's the role of a business analyst and a product owner? Because this is only for your explanation I have put here. Who is a product owner? Who is it? So because most of you ask this question, right? Who is a business analyst? What does he do? As I told you earlier, we write user stories. We prepare modeling. So we do the elicitation techniques. All of that we do. And product owner. So combination of these two is nothing but your, this is what is the end solution to your project. Okay, guys. What is a scrum master? Scrum master, what does it do? And what does a business analyst do? It's another very common question. Scrum master is serve the team communication, removes impediments, allocate the task, estimate the work, manage risk and coordinate the internal external team. Scrum master does analytical work, negotiation work, system thinking, decision making. He'll also make sure he has domain knowledge, understand the product scope and he works on the requirements. Okay, guys. So this is how we, we, we all the, if you notice, guys, business analyst, product owners interlinked. 
Kramas and business analysts are interlinked. So basically, we're trying to interlink the roles in Agile because unlike waterfall, we do not have rigid roles, guys. In Agile, we have very flexible roles. You might have to act like a scrum master for a day also, being a business analyst, right? It all depends on the organization, the structure, and the way that uh, the project goes. Eventually, my main motto is to complete the project and give it to the client. That is our, what is our main motto, guys. Okay. The final question of your prep two is a resume of the product owner. You can just download the uh, resume. Eventually, what we need as a mentor is we need to explain you to explain what are the responsibilities of a product owner. What does a product owner do in the project? So that is what we are trying to explain. Ask in this product owner resume. Okay, guys. If I'm just walking through your question paper, this is a question paper. The quest, first question is right about agile manifesto. The second question is user stories. Please note, we've asked you to write 640 user stories. So make sure you try to write a very detailed user story like the way I told you. We cannot have one or two lines like this for your acceptance criteria. So write a little detailed user stories. Okay. So the third question is, what is an epic? I've explained you what is the difference between BV and CP. What is a sprint, right? What is a product backlog and a sprint backlog? Impediment logs, right? Yes, guys, then you need to prepare these uh, velocities, burn down charts, your product backlog grooming, right? Roles of Scrum Master. What is What are the meeting size, Scrum size, DOD, DOD prioritization? Because this is how you do your prep too. Now I'm open to answer your questions, guys. Any questions, anyone related to prep two or any agile related topics, please ask. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk about a uh, product vision document? Product what is vision this? Who prepared document. this? Product vision document is nothing like a scope document that we have in Waterfall project. Okay. Product vision document explains about the objective of the project. So what is the objective of the project? If I go back to this, see here. The project vision document talks about what is the name of the project, where is the venue, the date, and who are the stakeholders, who is the scrum team here. Uh, Deepay, uh, I'll answer, okay, who is the scrum team here, who are, what is the, what is the vision of your project, what do you want to see, okay, who are the target group, what are the needs of your project, like for example, you need, to, you have to give safe food, okay, who will benefit? The customers will be benefited. You know, what is unique about the product? It is nothing but is available 24 by 7 and then the value. Then you will also explain who are what are the features used by the customer, what are the features used by delivery boy and the other stakeholders or the end users be very precise. And then we will. So basically, the product vision document is nothing but the scope document, like explaining the objective and outline the project. Are you clear, Amit? And uh, who prepares it? This is handled again generally the scrum team, the scrum master, and the product owner. Means it's uh, it's in the current industry practice or it's just outdated? It is there. It is there probably because it is agile. They might have different names, but, but it is very important to document the objective of the project. It is very important. Without that, the team will not understand what is the goal because you might forget. It is still there. Thank you. Yeah, most welcome. Yes, uh, Deepesh asked the question. No, Deepesh, we don't have to buy hard this answer at all. This the Agile Manifesto. But you need to understand what is it, but don't buy hard it. Okay, guys. Ma'am, can you once explain BV? How we assign the points to that? Like, I didn't understand your question. Business value. Business value, how do we assign in Jira tool or in generic? Generically, uh, we were we were it was two thousand uh, points are assigned and all. 
Yes, the basically this business value points are assigned based on the the importance of the user story, right? Generally, what happens is they use multiple techniques. Let's assume I'm using currency notes technique. Okay, when I'm using the currency notes technique, what do I do? I will give each and every currency note to a to the scrum team. The scrum team will give some value to it: five hundred, hundred, two hundred, three hundred, whatsoever. Then it will be placed on the table. Then they'll have discussions. So why you did you give five hundred versus why did you give two hundred or whatever? Then once the discussions will happen and once they come to a conclusion, then one value will be given to that user story. That is how the business value is calculated for a user story. Are we all clear? It man to have business value for uh, the each of the. Yes, it is important to have business value, right? Even in the Jira, do we capture it? Business value, no, because the Jira we don't because from the product backlog we put it directly to the user stories to the sprint, right? In Jira we don't have business value. Okay. Okay, guys. Any other questions, anyone? Okay, guys. If you have no questions for now, then we can call it a day because we have. Uh...